like an artist in residence there, which is a really cool and fun thing that he's doing. And he also has a side gig just making and selling his own artwork. He, he's on display in a couple of galleries around Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. Awesome. It's really cool. So I guess since you folks are all involved with ABA, I don't need to go through uh, what is autism and how early it's detected and what can be done for children who are diagnosed. I'm guessing that you all pretty much know that. Yeah, we're pretty hip to that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Then I'll skip forward to uh, maybe some statistics. How many people know the current rate of autism diagnosis? Anyone want to make a guess? I know, but <laughs> one in fifty-six now. That's it. Yep. Yeah. So, um, more, still more boys than girls. But that's a disturbing statistic because the rate is going up; it's not going down. So there's now that some real urgency. I think that there always has been, but more urgency than ever to actually start addressing this problem. Um, Autism as a disorder does not attract a lot of research funding. Autism Speaks is the third largest private, uh, the third largest funder of re research into the causes and uh, interventions for autism. So there's a lot of work to be done. Now is the time to really start moving forward on this blooming crisis because one in 56 is not a sustainable figure. Um, so, thank you. All right. And how can I skip through some no, of these? Just, Lisa, does that hurt the camera? Mm hmm. Get the camera, so see, okay, we'll yeah, we're good. All right. Except I think we're having video problems. Ah, there we okay, go. Okay, thank you. So we'll skip forward. Thank <coughs> you. And again, okay, so we all know that I think the symptoms of autism, so we can go on. How should I interact? We all know that too. One in 68, that's out of date. Uh, let's move forward. A lot of different presentations of autism, which I think we know. The mission of Autism Speaks has changed somewhat in the last couple of years. It used to be very focused on curing autism. And whilst that does remain an important component of the work of Autism Speaks, come to the realisation that there are a lot of people who are happy to have autism and just want to be have the things that they need to live their best life and that's very much part of the mission of Autism Speaks. Always has been, but the mission has been re-articulated to just represent all of those views and aspirations. So promoting solutions across the spectrum, I really love that. My son's at the more severe end of the spectrum and it kind of frustrates me when there are things out there but they're only for so-called high functioning or for kids who do this or that. It, we we want to look after everyone. Okay, this is some fine print. I think understanding and acceptance of autism really has elevated. Most people not these days know what it is and know someone on the spectrum. Um, being a catalyst for research breakthroughs, I'm going to go through that in a little bit more detail because that's a very exciting area. Increasing early childhood screening and timely intervention. There are screenings that can be done even in infants to um, indicate their susceptibility to autism and that's the time to get in. There's a bit of advocacy work to do to get autism screening as part of a routine well, hop, well child check when they visit the paediatrician. So that's a work in progress. Improving the transition into adulthood is another very big focus for Autism Speaks. Access to reliable information and services throughout the lifespan, also a very big area for Autism Speaks. Has anyone been to the Autism Speaks website? Yeah, a couple people. It really does have a lot of resource there. Uh, very family friendly, so if you're encountering families who don't know what to do, the Autism Speaks website is a great reference that you can put families in touch with to find out. It, it has a lot of toolkits and checklists that um, can really help par put parents in touch with some evidence-based practice. Thank you, Becky. Let's skip forward for that. Okay. We 
we've had some success in increasing autism <coughs> awareness. That's great. And what's pleasing, I think, I think um, local cinema or movie theatres now and community <coughs> events are, and places of entertainment for children, churches are all now starting to move down that track of making themselves sensory friendly, autism friendly, which is really pleasing, makes families feel welcome. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to just rest here for a little while on research breakthroughs and we'll skip forward to the next slide with some detail. One of the really big projects that Autism Speaks funds and sponsors is the Missing Project. Has anyone heard of that? It got some media um, on PBS. Uh, it is a data bank of 10,000 genome sequence of people on the spectrum. It is a really powerful resource. If it was a movie, it would run continuously for 30 years. That's the amount of data that's been gathered now. And it's up on Google Cloud. Did anyone hear about the partnership between Autism Speaks and Google? No, because it's obviously a data bank of that size is a huge um, a huge resource to manage and Google have partnered, which is which is wonderful thing. Uh, it's open research, which means that any bona fide research organization can access the data bank with their research question. Um, traditionally, institutions have to pay large sums of money to get access to the data. That's not the case with this one. It's free to every bona fide. Uh, researcher. They, uh, they have to show their credentials and that they have a serious research question, but this is a serious effort to really make some breakthroughs into causes and treatment for autism. Yeah. There's also uh, a lot of co-occurring medical and mental health conditions that go with autism and uh, what's been learned is that autism isn't just a, a, a behavioural disorder, it's a whole of body disorder, it, it does affect metabolic pathways, um, it affects the whole nervous system and motor skills and all the things that you're probably aware of. Um, they do have some foundation in uh, multiple systems in the body. So let's move forward. Um, one of the things that then stems from those discoveries that it's a whole of body thing is to develop better just medical care for people with autism. As a parent, I found it really frustrating to go to the pediatrician with my son with a health problem and be told, oh, that's just his autism. You think, well, no, actually, no, I don't think it is. Um, like, he really does have an issue with diarrhea all the time, and we need to get to the bottom of that. And it wasn't very satisfactory to be told that it was just his autism. Uh, at the moment, there are 13 medical centres and academic facilities. They're kind of grouped around the nation by convenience, just because they've come together, because they have a common interest. But the goal and strategy of Autism Speaks is to have a medical centre in every state. That's a pretty lofty and long-term goal, but it's something that's very much needed. Um, at the moment, 40,000 children each year are receiving treatment through those existing 13 centres. That figure really needs to go up. So that's part of the mission of Autism Speaks. Thank you. As a result of, oh, sorry, as a result of advocacy, um, autism is, can be reliably diagnosed pretty early, even around 18 months of age, 12 to 18 months of age, kids can be popped into intervention if they're starting to show signs. It can, um, I think for a period, the, the, it was being diagnosed below the age of three, but that figure's actually started to creep up, which means there's a, probably a strain on resources just to get those diagnoses. That figure really needs to start coming down, not going up. So we can um, move forward with that. Transitioning to adulthood. Jobs is the biggest thing. Finding meaningful employment for kids is one of the most important goals for anyone. And what you do here is just so important to that. All the skills that you're building up 
uh, foundational skills really do translate into employability at the end of the day. Not just employability, but also being able to be part of the family in the long term. My goal for, for my family is, um, I have a daughter who's 15, my son's 18. When she's in her 30s, I want her to be ringing her brother and saying, hey, do you want to come around for dinner? Rather than having a caseworker phone her, saying your brother's in crisis and he needs you. That's really what I think most families want, is that we stay together as a family unit and that as uh, parents start to age out, that siblings are in relationship with a person on the spectrum who can be incorporated into family life. So that is a pretty big and growing goal, I think. How, what, what age group do you work with here? Um, I think our youngest is, is about three, uh -huh. and then uh, probably our oldest, we're trying to get some kids in here about 13, 14, 15, but we've served kids um, all the way up to 22. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you're kind of familiar with some of those issues. Uh, like, new age, what do I say, new level, new devil. Yeah. <laughs> that's the way it works out right. in, my, in my life. Uh, but, uh, well, that's true for neurotypical kids too. So. Yeah, they don't stop. They don't stop learning in in the teenage years. That's that's something I've really learned. My son's eighteen, and he is still acquiring language. You never ever give up on language mm -hmm. acquisition as a goal. Um, okay, we can move forward. Thank you. Reliable information. There's just so much junk out there to do with autism and uh, being able to discern what's fact and what's fiction. I'll admit, I'll put my hand up, I've been sucked into some, into some shonky treatments because I really wanted to believe that it would help. People go to those things in desperation um, and the promises do look pretty attractive. It's hard work running an ABA program, right? And when someone's coming to you offering a quick fix, um, it looks pretty attractive. Autism Speaks aims to be a resource that families can turn to so that they can navigate that path. Okay. So reliable information is just so very important. Okay. Autism Speaks runs a very big family support service and its main goal is not to replicate local services but to just put people in touch with the plethora of services that are in their area. And there is a, um, a call in line, people can get one-to-one -one support pretty promptly within 24 hours they will get a phone call back from somebody who can direct them personally and do follow up. Uh, so that's a really great resource. It's also offered in Spanish speaking. Thank you. We need help. I s we'll move on from that. Thank you. Donation. Our walk is a very big fundraising event, um, the, the biggest event that we run every year. I see that you've already got posters. Yes. So thank you so much. Um, we're also looking for volunteers, if people are, are, are willing and able to help us on walk day, that's the 22nd of September, that would be fantastic. Thank you everyone. Is there any questions? How do we sign up to volunteer? We have an online link to mm -hmm. do that. I can send you some information okay. on how to do okay. so. Okay. So, um, real quick, I don't know if all of you all know me, I'm Lisa. I do the, um, I do the onboarding of families. Please don't videotape me. Um, we, I do the onboarding of families and the marketing and things like that. I've been with Dima for about seven years now and various functions. So anyway, um, I'm also responsible for coordinating the team for our walk this year. Last year we had a great, great turnout. There was about 50 of us um, plus, plus ones. So um, that means partners and friends and family, dogs, whatever, <laughs> babies. We were all there walking. This year we've upped our support of Autism Speaks as a great organization, um, mostly about the research. I mean, the research that they're doing is amazing, and some really interesting breakthroughs if you ever want to hop on the, the website. So this year we've upped our, um, our support of this by becoming a volunteer sponsor. So what that means is that um, we all have the opportunity to volunteer at the walk, to help set up, to set up tents, to 
sign people in, things like that. If you can't do that, that is fine. We would welcome you to be a part of our team. Like I said last year, we had about 50 people and we raised about $500. So I'm hoping that we can do a little bit more this year. It was so much fun. And I did hear that there was even fun after the walk, if you get my meaning. So, um, <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'll be setting up our team website now that you've learned a little bit about the organization and what we're supporting here. This is the walk for autism in, in Indianapolis. So there are lots of events that go, up, go on that we're a part of, but this is the big one. So I encourage you to clear your calendar on the 22nd so we can come together as a team. We can uh, walk. Um, a lot of our families participate in this, so you'll see a lot of our kids and our families there as well. Um, I will be setting up our team page probably today, tomorrow. Um, and it's like any other walk, you know, for diabetes or anything. You know, where you do, you kind of nudge your family and friends, hey, I'm going to do this walk. Would you mind just throwing $10 at me for doing this? And then that's how we raise the money for the team. We've got cool hats we're all going to be sporting. Last year we had t-shirts. Whoop, whoop, there they are. Um, so everyone can recognize us. Um, those who uh, wish to volunteer, I will be staffing our booth, our resource booth. I'll be there, you know, all day, every day. But um, for those of you who wish to volunteer, you're going to get a special t-shirt for Autism Speaks Volunteer. It's going to have a Daymar logo. So we're going to be there loud and proud. Um, and I really hope that our team can expand. Invite your friends, invite your family, invite your dogs, invite whatever. Um, we want to be there really showing who we are because every organization is there and we need to be there really large. Okay? Do you have any questions? Okay. Well, thank you to Wendy. Thank you, everybody. Oh, and this is Rachel. She's part of our marketing department. Hello. Hi. Hi. Did you <laughs> I know, I know. It was pretty brutal with the rain, too. Um, and so Rachel's here also. I don't know if you know, we have a marketing team down at the main campus, and she's going to, she's kind of helping us out, get out there too, so. Okay, well, thanks, Wendy. Thank you. I'll I know that you guys have lots to talk too. about. It has nothing to do with this walk, so I appreciate your time. And um, I'm going to get this on Central Reach, I swear, so our 